And welcome back to the 16th episode of the House Talks Podcast. Today we have a very special guest on, Farhad the Fashion Whisperer, a personal shopper as well as a sourcer at Holt Renfrew in Vancouver. Today we're going to be talking about more than just general fashion. We're going to be talking to you about how you should dress for work to make yourself look as presentable and professional as you possibly can. As he explains in this episode, Lululemon might not cut it anymore, might need to step your game up a little bit. If you're in the need for new clothes, make sure to check them out at Farhad Fashion Whisperer or visit them at Holt and Renfrew in Vancouver. Everybody, enjoy Enjoy this episode make sure to subscribe and we want to thank you for all the support that we've been getting this far it's been absolutely amazing we're going to keep it up every wednesday we're going to be releasing a new episode so make sure you don't miss a single one as far as fashion which side of the world do you think have the best fashion because you probably have some experience right i mean for fashion oh you're uh, definitely europe not especially in canada we're um, we're very behind yeah like it's very simple it, it, italy and europe people are more open-minded to new ideas mm-hmm. in uh, especially in canada we were not Especially, like uh, in Canada, people are very uh, oh, they like the word black always. I'm speaking Vancouver, hoodies and t-shirts. <laughs> you know? The worst thing is when you are, uh, when you, in, it's a Friday night, the couple's going on a date. You see the girl dressed up really nicely, and the husband wearing a, a, a shorts and a hoodie and a hat. It's like you didn't you guys left the same house, or you guys <laughs> meeting. It's like it's pretty embarrassing when watching that happen. You see it a lot. Of course. Only in Vancouver. I mean, in Toronto probably slightly better, but. It's, it's pretty bad. Gives a gives us a bad name. So the guys here are falling behind quite a bit. Yeah, some of the older guys, they don't want to try. Yeah, like, <laughs> if you go on a date, I just try a little bit, you know, just no, like a always. even if you put a t-shirt, blue jeans on, like a blazer. Yeah, it looks looks good. Like you're trying a little bit, you know. Do you think that has something to do with like the outdoorsy outside atmosphere of the Vancouver area? And if it does, is there something? that are style changes that people can make to still be functional and be, be able to be outside, but just have a little bit more style. Like you said, shorts and a t-shirt or a hoodie might not cut it. Yeah, it doesn't, I mean, they, they could, it just, I have like a outdoor, there's a lot of outdoor things you can wear, which is a little more dressier. Mm-hmm. Like now they do those uh, sweatpants with the drawstrings. It looks, looks like a sweat, I mean, it feels like a sweatpants, but it's much more comfortable, a lot of stretch to it. You can throw like a nice t-shirt and like a denim jacket with it. And uh, shoes are very important. Have a nice, clean shoes. Sneakers are big right now, like white sneakers. It's always good to come with anything. Blue jeans, white t-shirt, and a, and a blazer. Or like a, stri- or like a nice sweatshirt goes, with, goes far. And don't wear hats in the restaurant. If you sit in the restaurant with a table, take off your hat from the side. It's a respect thing, you know? It doesn't look You go into Alisa, for example, and guys with a hat on. It's like, take, take that off. <laughs> Especially if you're with the, on, a, on a date with your girl, you want to, I mean, yeah. respect. Well, I mean, uh, the chair, move the chair for her, put the chair for the, put, put the jacket on her when she leaves, you know? Those things, and then you go home, and you, you'll get lucky, because, you know, she goes home. Yeah. A boy's trying, you know? <laughs> Open the door for yeah. her. The small things that makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Instead of open the doors, like go oh, get in, let's go. You know, yeah. then you expect to something happen. I mean, get home, but not getting lucky. You get mad and get in a fight. So when you're looking for clothes for either yourself or for clients, when what would you say drives your direction? Is it just intuition? Is it this person has looked good in this uh, kind of outfit in the past, or do they sometimes give you some directive on what they're looking for? So most people, they, when they come in the store, they go, hey, um, I mean, I like to always ask, like, how much you want to spend? Because it makes it clear, like, I don't want to bring something expensive and then they feel bad, it's like, okay, I'm obligated to buy this, and then I'm not going to see them again because, you know, this guy sold something I don't want to know. So they tell me what they're looking for and what's the event they're going for. And then uh, what the event they're going for and what's the outfits for. Office and go to the, like yesterday I had a client who wanted to, is a big guy who wanted to get the office stuff, plus after office going to, go to club or go to restaurant, yeah. he couldn't find anything. So we put some stretchy stuff on him. Like 11T has some really nice pieces. It's like stretchy, um, it was like sweatpants, dress, dress, dress pants, sweatpants with the drawstrings, and like a blazer I gave him, which was very stretchy. It made him feel comfortable. He came out with a t-shirt, and again, white sneakers, or any sneakers, very comfortable. Depends what they're looking for, and we go from there. Gotcha. So finding stuff that people are comfortable in, because comfortable equals maybe confidence, and then you just feel better in the clothes that you're wearing. Exactly, if, if, you, uh, if you dress well, you feel confident, and it shows. I mean, going out, people go, oh, that guy looks very confident, looks good. It does not matter the label you're wearing, it just depends how you wear it and how you show it. You, know? you could be wearing black jeans and a black t-shirt, but as long as you have that confidence in that, it makes all the difference in the world. Right? And also you can wear like a bunch of patterns or whatever, just as long as whatever you wear, if you're comfortable with that look, and you, sh- when you go out, you're confident, people 
go on the last Quranum. But if you're um, shy when you put it on, because I don't know if it's last Quranum, people will go, that looks ugly because the guy is wearing it, is not comfortable wearing it. Yeah, that, that, that happened to me. I think my mom had just gone to Holt and she bought back a, a miri blue and white sweater. Oh, yeah. I put it on, I was like, this is so flashy, I feel so uncomfortable in it. <laughs> and the whole time I'm just standing there, arms crossed at the Drake concert. <laughs> Yeah, it's the confidence is a big thing. Even if yeah. you, uh, let's say you fake it till you make it, you know, so just what? pretend. You know, you, you worry about confidence, no matter what it is. If you feel good in that, and you portray that, hey, look at this, I'm very confident in my, my skin. What's the one item that gets you the most confident wearing it? Myself or clients? Just for you. Oh, anything. Anything? <laughs> that's put it on me, I got it? <laughs> no, I mean, when, when I wear my, um, actually my Tom Ford suits, the best compliment I had once I was uh, I was walking down Granville and this old lady in a wheelchair, and she goes, "Hey son, that suit looks really nice." She didn't know what brand it was. I just knew like you know it looks good because like, yeah. you know just some of the brands how you put it together, right? That was the best compliment I ever received. Definitely, I think one of the things that we've been told to since we started this podcast is everyone's like, "You guys need to start dressing up more." Like when we're, cause now that we're on camera and stuff like that. I mean, we're beside you two right now. I'm just like, it is. Yeah. We, cause we, we just woke up we, from a nap. <laughs> yeah. We try to, we try to wear our own apparel, obviously, you know. Yeah, I'm we, just trying to represent the brand, man. Yeah, I try to represent the brand here a little bit too. But I was like, hey, I guess when you're in the public eye, you, you should dress a little bit better because people will pick up. You might get, even get more viewership. Like, like you said, if you're, you're wearing it with confidence and you're, you're dressing to impress, like the same thing, like you're entering a restaurant. If you're, you're, you know, you're, you're wearing the right stuff, people will have more eyes on you, right? Definitely. Plus, when you go out places, people respect you more too. Yeah. Get more respect. Like for me, like what I like, I dress comfortable. I'm, I'm trying to dress a little, up a little bit more. Like you know, when I go out and stuff like that. I think I do an all right job. Depends who you ask, I guess. But one thing I really love is my suits. I, I love my suits. Like if it's if it's an event, like I got like eight to ten different different suits, and like I'll rotate through them, or I'll get one made like every year, two made or something like that. But I re I really love that. Um, one thing part of that we talked about before you came. Uh, the fa the fashion industry, especially yours, like it's just like everything else, whether it's real estate, whether it's the car industry, the fashion industry, it's you find that it's very market dependent. So if the pe you know people are making a lot more money, they're spending more on luxury goods. Or how does that kind of work for you? And how are you able to predict uh, when you'll have a good year compared to when you'll have maybe a not so good year? I mean, right now in Canada, especially the interest rate are so high. So what happens when people not making money? The first thing they cut out is fashion. You do need that luxury piece that is, we want to get. You need that sweater for $800, you just wait. It is not, not important. You can tell when people, um, as soon as they wait a couple of weeks and then see how the interest is going, they come in slowly. Because our industry is very dependent to the stock market and how the interest goes up, very, very important. Like any luxury goods, even cars, watches, we all depend on the uh, interest rate. Especially right now with, with our prime, prime minister is not doing a great job, but yeah. you know. Yeah. We're all getting sc <laughs> screwed. Yeah. Yeah. We're all getting screwed. Yeah. yeah. But what can you do, right? So one thing to kind of take away from fashion, but it does coexist, is you mentioned that you're very active. You like to do kickboxing. You like to go into the gym. How important is it to feel confident in clothes, just being a healthy human being, trying to make sure that you keep yourself in shape? And then how much of that plays into how you style yourself? Because what it is, uh, I mean, in sales, any sales, you, you, you're under a lot of pressure. So it's good to just uh, take two hours for yourself. You do it in the gym or go for a walk or anything, yoga, just to mentally want to clear, uh, clear your mind and feel good about yourself. Because if you feel good, when you go to work, you want to be confident. Of, because you're always meeting new people, you want to impress. First impression is the, the best. Being active is, I mean, very, very important. Even if you go for a walk after each dinner for half an hour, you have to clear your mind because you don't want to come home with you know all the work stuff. No. And you take it on your you know spouse or girlfriend or whatever, right? Yeah. And when you have a fresh pump, you you already feel a little more confident. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Harder. Doesn't yeah, care what you mean, right? Yeah. Doesn't care what you're wearing. I mean, just like, you show the door is this way and you flex. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I guess because that's one thing that we're trying to we're, we're putting out new apparel and uh, Fire gave us some good ideas. I'm not going to reveal what they are, but. I guess speaking with a fashion expert, yeah, it has its pros. So look out for our uh, new apparel. I didn't. It's funny. You, you, you you, yeah. You're already on the. You were actually already had this idea. Was and Byron confirmed it. We, we can't say it. You can't say it. Cut it out. I'm curious. Oh no, just the. 
Oh, those ones? Yeah, so you're onto something, Jazz. So Jazz is our... Uh, uh, in-house designer. Oh, yeah. sick. Jazz I'm like the wannabe in-house. forehead, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Bard, what, what, what's in right now, man? Like, just say, you're, you're dressing us up right now. And I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, all of us pretty much have the same things going on, boys. Uh, for the most part, you know what I mean? As far as work and stuff. Okay, you're dressing us up. What, where are we? Okay, we're just turned 30. Right, so we're young. We like to work. Uh, we who work you out. turned thirty? Shut up, Jazz. Yeah, man, talk for yourself. Sorry, we turned thirty. We turned thirty. I'm just balls, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, you know, we 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 work quite a bit. So comfort is something that is important to us, obviously, uh, the the day in day out. But you know, we take meetings. We we see a lot of our customers. Uh, yeah, I guess now we do a podcast, so it's important for for us to to look good, and we're athletic guys. I'm just trying to give as much information to you as possible as I can. Just stand up and do a twirl. I should. Right? Take off your shirt and flex. <laughs> Four weeks ago, I would, but with this, you know, feeling a little deflated. Yeah, wait till I'm done, then I'll come back. I'm gonna come back just optimal form for you. Or not, just going. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but yeah, what 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 are what, what are some tips that you would give us just to, to dress us up, up real quick, so make us presentable, just on a day to day basis, and maybe hey, even date night, so our wives and girlfriends would appreciate it. I mean, the fashion right now. I mean, it's as you guys know, everything is looser fitting from the pants to the shirt. The the, the old school look is back now. The bag, but for you guys, I don't think you're wanna. I mean, West Coast is not ready for that. Yet, even though the Italy, all they show is like high waisted pants, but looser fitting pants and so on and forth. Yeah, for the guys. Like yes. Oh yeah, I'm probably yeah. out for that. Yeah. So what I would do for you guys is I would recommend a couple the uh, pair of page jeans because they have a little stretch to them. You can wear it to the office. You can wear it to the restaurant. You can wear it to work. Uh, I like. A, I recommend to wear the Lenox body, which is a slim fit, and then you can add uh, uh, some a polo or a couple of t-shirts to go with it. Or actually, this other uh, shirt brand that we have is called Emmanuel Burke. It's a stretchy, dressy uh, dress shirt. It's a business casual. You can get some of those in a black or blue or white. So basic jeans you want to get is in dark blue, gray, and black. Those are your basics. You can do so much with that. And then you go, maybe you get a, instead of wearing a dress shoe with the pair of jeans, I recommend doing a sneaker. It's better. Sometimes his work looks weird. You're wearing a dress shoes and a sneaker. I would do like a nice, uh, I mean, dress shoe and pair of jeans. I would do a sneaker and jeans. You can do a nice t-shirt, like a, a simple blazer. You could do, yeah, or a nice card again if you want to go. It depends how casual you're going. Yeah, because even the point you were making before, like, if you see like a nice shirt or a nice jacket, you, the chances of you seeing it again on someone else like, a week later is quite high. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people do own like the same pieces, or not even the same pieces, but like the same type of colors and stuff like that. I do see that, and then all of us are trying to dress, dress different, but then here we are dressing in the blacks, and you know what I mean? The that type of thing. You think it's a confidence thing? Sorry to go through. It is a confidence thing. Like you, you, you wear black because you don't want to be, you think you're not being noticed. Like let's say somebody is a heavy set guy, what would do? They won't wear a, a color, they won't wear black because first of all, black slimming and then the confidence thing. Because mm-hmm. people see me and they go, oh, okay. I look, I look, I look. That's a good tip right I over black, bro. <laughs> I look slimmer in this, right? So it look, it look good. It looks like I'm, I'm, I'm more in shape when black. So a lot of reason why a lot of guys wear black. It's because, of the, I mean, it's slimmer and it looks good. Black is always mysterious too. It's a confidence thing too. But there's guys, that are big guys that wear beautiful stuff, white, they wear blue, they wear, you know, pink, because they're confident, they don't care. It's like you put it together. Yeah. But it depends on the season too, right? Do you want to wear like a sweater in summertime? You could do a nice lightweight uh, seersucker jacket or something. There's a lot of things you could do. There's, I mean, basics, three pair of jeans, you need one, one sneaker and a blazer. You could, it does so much for you. Navy blazer is the best, because navy goes with more colors than the black does. Getting into summer here, one of the things we talked about earlier was shorts. Um, speaking for myself, at least, I have no idea what type of short is appropriate in a certain type of setting. Like, you know, you see everybody in the Lululemon shorts and they just, they'll just wear that to dinner, to the gym, on a date, whatever it may be. And get into summer, like, is it linen shorts are best? Is it, what would you recommend for some if guys you, who know nothing? About if you have to wear, I mean, don't wear Lululemon unless you go into the gym. Or golfing. Or golfing. I see a lot of girls that I hate. I see they're wearing a Chanel bag and a little lemon outfit. It's like, where are you going, honey? Are you going to the gym or, <laughs> or well, what is happening, right? Uh, it's like, you know, I like to give those guys a ticket. It's like, you know, for a beautiful bag with a shitty outfit. You know? yeah. <laughs> a fashion ticket, right? <laughs> yeah, a fashion ticket. Oh, no. They stick it right on their forehead. Today's where everybody's too sensitive, so uh, we, yeah. we, we, can't, we can't do that. <laughs> but, I mean, in terms of short, if you want to get a short cotton short with a little bit of stretch is good. 
Because uh, if it's 100% cotton, it'd be stiff. It'll take a while to uh, soften up. But if it's, if it's like, uh, like a 2% lycra in it, what happens? Gives you more comfort. Make sure you wear it above the knee. It's a little bit inch above the knee. Makes mix looks uh, looks longer. Makes it look taller, and it's more dressier too. If you wear it over the knee, it looks um, it looks shorter too. Like John Cena when you see him wear those. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's not a good look. No, yeah, yeah. that's not a good look. Okay, like looks like a tall midget. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, like over your kneecap and stuff? Yeah, over the knee. It looks like uh, the old school ball shorts. I, I, can't, I have one pair of shorts. Like I never wear them again. It's just really they, uncomfortable. They went from having like a five yeah, inch yeah, inseam to so like 20 inch inseam back down to like eight to 10 now. Looks nicer. I mean, I mean yeah. especially when, when you work out, yeah. you know, show off a little bit of muscle on your More right? mobility. Yeah, too. exactly. More comfortable too, right? Yeah. Are, do you think that you mentioned the John Cena shorts above or below the knee? Have you noticed I've seen him wear jorts or jean shorts a fair bit? And I've heard a lot of people who have much better fashion sense than me say that it's very hard to style jean shorts. And I have a few friends that are big into those in the summer. Do you have any recommendations for uh, that? Jean shorts, I mean, I'm not a fan of jean shorts personally, unless, yeah. but you could style them. Make sure that they're slim fitting jeans, so not boxy. Again, above the knee. You can like a nice polo or like a nice t-shirt will go very nice with it, like a white t-shirt. So just follow nice fitted shorts above the just, knee exactly. and a nice t-shirt. Fitted a little stretch okay. shirt, yeah. Don't go like boxy shorts. I mean, unless you're wearing Balenciaga or something, or the whole outfit matches, but slimmer things will usually be better with the stretch to it. When is it appropriate to start wearing white pants again? I know they say not after Labor Day, but when do you start that back up? I mean... In the spring, I believe you could do it. In the spring is now, you can basically wear white now. Yeah. Why is that a thing, actually? Honestly, it does not matter. It just, I don't know. It's an like American thing, I think. Yeah. But, I mean, in Europe, it does not matter. I would never wear white. It get too messy. <laughs> when I leave my house, like, you can't wear white. <laughs> yeah. You're too big of a mess. Just when you wear white, especially pants, make sure your underwear are not color. Mm. White underwear or gray underwear. Because if it's color, you see it. Some guys were like pink or yellow or whatever color it is. And then, he, yeah, when you walk, he's like, you know, bro, come on, you know? No more just, purple G strings there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just, just wear like, if you wear white, white pants, white shorts, wear white underwear because yeah. it looks better. Is there like a fashion trend that you, from the, like, in the past, that you wish would come back again? That you really like, fucked with? I, I, what I would like to do is the suit come back. Suit. Suiting come back. I, would love, I mean, it will come back in a year or so. Was was coming back and then COVID happened and then people start getting lazy again. No. But I would love to people more wear more suits and blazers more. That'd be yeah. like everybody dressed up. It's, it's very nice, you know, like see guys to the office where now up to the office people wear a t shirt and jeans. It doesn't yeah. look good, you know. Uh, wear the more same casual now, right? Yeah, they wear the same dirty jeans for days and days. It's like, you know if I had a power I would just make everybody wear suits to the events. Even the restaurants. Like in Europe, everybody has a navy blazer. Yeah. You go out, you just put it on, goes with everything, right? And getting more into like the kind of the international scene of things, we've talked about Europe, obviously the hub. I've also seen Asia make a lot of uh, strides forward. You look at Uniqlo, big now global company, and a bunch of other Asian brands that are coming out. Is that something that interests you? Do they make a lot of pieces that you like, or do you still like to stick with the European stuff? No, I love uh, Japanese designers. My favorite is Japanese designers. You know, uh, Japanese and Korean brands are very, very hot. Like basically, uh, uh, from Korea, a lot of brands are coming in Japan, especially. Like uh, Japan has uh, Hizi Miyake, a couple of brands that's very, very popular. So the way it works is if you see it on a K-pop or a, 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 any uh, Korean drama, next day it sells out. This is the power that they have. Even us and Holtz, we, we, we carry now some of the, uh, we have a few different designers from uh, Japan. Japan fashion is a different world. And is that just, are they innovating more quickly or are they just they're very more stylish. I mean, anything in Japan, I love Japanese culture, they do it better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. The attention, attention to detail is, on, is very, very different. Interesting. The Europeans sometimes they don't see it, but Japanese people. And yeah. Is that pride in themselves? Like they want to carry? Even like Japanese denim, they do savage denim. Their denim is like the best for any other denim. I've seen like videos, like TikToks and stuff like that, people in Japan, like just walking down the street, it's like a they're walking down like a, a runway show or something. It's cool like the way they put things together. Like their hair, like their like the, everything's that their accessories. It looks very simple, down. even though it's all black. It looks very nice. Yeah. Like you can see, it's a very cool piece. I mean, in Canada, you don't see that. You see a lot of lemon. But what about like accessories? Like you know what I mean? Like I know like guys wear like their side bags or like you know the Merces or. Things like that, like obviously they, you know, they got the watches. Watches will never go out of style. I mean, watch and uh, beads, bracelets, always good to have. Uh, beads and 
I mean, you should wear, I mean, watch whatever it doesn't have to be a designer, watch along the look good on you, right? Yeah. You should not worry what your friends have, you just wear what you have. Live with your means, right? A lot of guys, you know, take a loan to buy a watch, but they can't afford the loan, you know, just... Or they rent it. Or rent it, just wear what you can, live on your means. It's not, I mean, a simple watch. Yeah. Like, I'm wearing a Seiko today, it was my favorite watch. Yeah. It's like, it's li I love it, simple, looks good. No, it looks good, yeah. I, I actually, still, right when, I, when yeah. I met you outside and I shook your hand, I noticed yeah, it right away. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be designed. No longer looks good. You put it together well. People take loans good. on watches? Yeah. Okay. A lot of people do that, yeah. Just loans just to be, uh, live in their environment. They see their friends or TV or, or rap videos that they go, okay, I want to look like that guy, but I'll be happy. But when they do that, they're not happy because then you have to pay those back. Uh, but I'm sure you've probably seen, like, maybe where you can kind of see like maybe a young kid or someone come in and they're buying like a $5,000 piece or so, of like, you know, a clothing article and you know, like, you know, they saved up for like a year to buy it. Uh, but then it's like, how many times are you going to wear that? I mean, you know, some people will wear it like a hundred times, but like, I don't know, like for me, this is where, and this is just me, you know, if you like nice things, get nice things. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. Uh, my wife one time got got me in a very expensive jacket. I've probably worn it three times. So I'm just like, you know, it was very, it was, this little flashier is really out there. And I was just like, in my head, sometimes I think, oh, I've, I've, I've worn this before. I've worn this this many times. People have seen me wear it. Maybe I shouldn't wear it again or things like that. And I'm like, well, that's kind of a waste too. You know what I mean? Because do I enjoy wearing it? I, I do. But uh, I, I guess what I mean to say is that like, you don't really need to spend thousands of dollars just to no, look No, you good. don't. No, you don't. But you could, I mean, I, you could accessorize your stuff. Yeah, accessorizing is very big. You get a belt or you know, like, like jewelry or shoes. You don't have to, the whole outfit doesn't have to be designer. You know, you know a few things here and there completes the outfit. If you can, obviously, if you can afford it, go for it, right? If you can, then accessorize this. Don't worry about what your friends wear. Wear what you're comfortable with. If you put some things together, like I said, and you're confident with that look. Don't worry what anybody says. Just go for it. Don't worry about hey, the, this ugly is like well. You see yourself in the mirror, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the way I look, then and keep it like that. Don't worry about what anybody you assess. I mean, in terms of bags, I mean, now the season bags are big right now, right? The fanny packs coming back in style, the side bags. Just get the one that suits your body. Don't get like a designer one, like says Gucci all over it. No, something simpler that you can wear it every day. Like I have a side bag from uh, Bottega, it's all black. Yeah. There's, no, there's no logos on it, but it's very useful. Wear it because it's useful. Don't buy it because, you know, you put a pen in there because I want to look good in it. That's it. You should have bought yours to send you today. You would have had a wallet. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have lost my wallet. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't take it because the last time I came back from vacation, they took me in for secondary. Yeah, but I, I know. I want to look like a jack coming back to there. Because what I do right now, because the government needs, needs money, so if they see a designer bag, especially LV, yeah. they, they pull you in and they make you pay duty. Even though it was like, I had a client that called me, he was like, yeah, I, saw, I saw on this bag like five years ago. Yeah. So they call me, they go, hey, uh, he goes, can you tell these guys that I bought this from you? So I have to go find the receipt for him and send it to them. I was like, this is like five, five-year-old bag. And they, they, they let, let him go. They kept him there for two hours for like an old bag. Over a bag? Yeah. Louis Vuitton bag. It's an older style too. It's like they don't make that style anymore. They see it, they go, who you come in? Yeah, the Ramoa suitcase. Oh, yes. And he saw that and right away he's like, come in here, yeah. sir. Show me your paper for a second. I was like... So you don't have to spell remote? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Talking about uh, old bags and older products and stuff, a big thing in the area is thrifting and going to thrift shops and vintage stores. How do you, what's your thoughts on that? Do you ever thrift or do any vintage clothes in yourself? Do you I don't it because I personally am very superstitious. Uh, I, I think it's bad luck. So the person that could have died or something bad could have happened to them. Because I know this uh, friend of mine, they bought a chrome heart necklace somewhere in the U.S. Uh, it's like beautiful, the one from... Um, uh, Fast and the Furious, the yeah. big cross. Uh, they bought it and a whole bunch of stuff happened to them. Like a lot of pain, move, stuff moving around the house, the thing was cursed. So they, they, they took it back and disappeared. This is what happened. I, I'm a firm believer in that. Like, you know, if you go after you, whatever you believe in that stuff, but I think if it's the bad omen and they lost it or got robbed from them, you, you, you get the bad luck. Leave those clothes and items with the person that bought them originally. Exactly. I'm not a fan of that, but... Whoever finds my wallet, San Diego, lots of bad shit happened to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be Throw it away. You're going to curse for life. <laughs> Byron, uh, how about now? I know um, you've started your own business. Uh, I have your hat, by the way. Love thank it. you. Thank yeah, you. Thank I you. have it too. Yeah, oh, thank you. Hi, buddy. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us, the dickheads not even wearing it the day we're interviewing. Honestly, uh, my so fat ass can't fit in them anymore. Sweet. Huh? My fat ass can't fit in them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's weird. <laughs> Wait, was it a black hoodie? Yeah. Shit. Okay. Yeah. I'll grab you a bigger one. I have a. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> rock, man. That's what it is. You put it in dry, probably. But uh, I did. My mom did. <laughs> <laughs> Living at home, man. Mom, that's an issue. Either your grandma or your mom. <laughs> yeah. But I uh, know. Th- speaking on that part, I I know like you know I have a I have a really good friend. He's uh, started his own suit line. Oh, he's nice. Really good suits. Um, oh, nice. Very uh, very very nice. Um, shout out to Tsinko. But how speak on that? Like how hard? Because like like you said, fashion's so trendy. Like you know, it's 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 such a subjective thing, right? But how, how did you get how did how did you get get into that how did you start it and uh what what are some challenges that you face cuz i mean the, the thing is starting your own brand is i mean you have to first of all you know what you want to do you can't just jump around doing different things you got to pick the right people and pick the right uh, piece you're going to create which is very important and then you want to put budgets aside like oh, i spend x amount of dollars and you don't want to keep funneling it putting spending more money and then if you want to do do one thing really good too like like little lemon thing, I guess the yeah. project. You do one thing really good and be really good at one piece, and then you try to sell that. If you sell that and you create more pieces, and then you go from there. And having, uh, I mean, having friends to be honest with you, right? Like going to like uh, American Idol. Like these people go, they can't sing, but the friend said, "Hey, you're really good at it." But they went there, they got embarrassed. So have friends that tell you, "Hey, honest with you, this this piece you're making sucks," or this is an awesome piece. So I mean. Have, have, have your friends support you, which is very important, and then be honest with you how that piece works. You don't want to go spend all this money and then have zero sales. Yeah. What, what pieces have you made uh, so far for your, uh, your I have a hat. My, my, hat, my first season hat is completely sold out. I was in a couple of, uh, I was on a TV show too, which I was very proud. Oh, really? What, what TV uh, show? Hats on a racks. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's like a detective and a dog. Yeah, they called me and they said, do you want to? I was like, go ahead, take it. Let me sign. <laughs> what do you guys need? Take as many as, many <laughs> as, you, take want. as, many as you want. Yeah, they bought like 13 hats for me. It was, 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 oh, wow. it was the black one? Yeah, 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 the black with the stars on it. Yeah, that was good. Those, yeah. Plus, every piece that we create is uh, one of a kind. So we don't make the same piece again. The black hoodie, I'm not going to do that again. It's, that, that was it. And then there'll be a new piece coming up. I got you. So you have another drop coming in? I have a drop coming in. We do uh, like the shirt I'm wearing today is one of the, the quiet fashion. So there's, there's no logo on it, but the material is a bamboo, so it's uh, antibacterial, it's breathable as well. It's black and pink. Pink is my favorite color, so China. I'm the older now, so I wear my color. You know? yeah. Not just the blacks and the whites. <laughs> Not just the blacks and whites. Yeah. And then I have a hat, which is you have as well, the, the, the blue one, with the, yeah. the blue logo. Yeah. It's a Vancouver, I wrote Vancouver on it is because Vancouver is my favorite city in the world. I travel a lot around the world, but Vancouver is Vancouver. It's expensive, you know, but whatever, but I think one of the nicest cities in the world. You guys are young, but once you travel, you know what I'm talking about. This is yeah. What dis- is distinctive about Vancouver? The culture, the food, the food. We, I think, I think outside Japan, Vancouver probably the best, next best sushi place in the world. You have the best food here than anywhere else. Our environment, the water, the mountain. You have everything in here. You need, you no need to go somewhere else. Like Lake Como, you know, is very popular. If you go to actually Kelowna, you can see the same. The only difference is they have a million um, years of culture we don't. Some pieces are very old, eh, Kelowna usually is not, uh, but we just have just as good. A uh, Joffrey Lake, if you go, it's beautiful there, you know, it's like you can't get that anywhere else. Because no. yeah. you go, when you're sitting in your own house, you don't appreciate the things that you have. Until you go away and come back, it's like, oh wow, this is, like my wife, for example, anywhere we go, she goes, well, this is better than Vancouver. It's like, you know, we travel all around the world. She goes, oh, I like this better, that's why you're here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking you next time. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much, you know, I mean, go goblin. She's, she's, no, but like, I feel like when you want a trip, when you come back, you just appreciate where you're So much more. Especially right. food, even Italian food. Where all some of the Italian restaurants we have here, is, it's amazing food. Yeah. Very good quality food. It just, you know, you just have to go with open mind, you know. Yeah, I think the biggest thing when you're traveling is just a history compared to what we have. Exactly, very true. And if you love that history aspect of it, that's what moves you to start liking that country better than exactly. anything in Canada. I think we were talking about it. Our nation is, what, 155 years old? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, and yeah 156, I think. Yeah. Cotter got that one on the dot. But you see that compared to something a thousand years old, like you go to Rome, you see the Colosseum, oh, yeah. and you're 
you're awestruck by, especially when you were born and raised in Yeah, this is totally, so totally different. Like yeah. in, uh, we're, we're, we're like 38 million in Canada, are we? I think Tokyo just is outside Tokyo is about 38 million. So it's like, I believe so. So we're like so behind. Uh, back back on your brand, brother. Um, st starting that up, I, I know you said uh, what you've already made, you're not going to make that anymore. Uh, what are you going to making next? So, yeah. So, I mean, the brand first was called The Black Heart. The Black Heart. The Black Heart is, comes from um, what you've been through in life. Like, it's, like, like I said, I grew up in life, I grew up in war. Uh, I've been through a lot of tough stuff in my life. I've been through a lot of, of hard pieces. So what Black Heart means is that you've been through a hard time but now you made it, but you're not forgetting what you've been through. That's what it means. Your, your heart is jaded, but you don't forget where you come from. Like, you've been through a hard life, but you've been stabbed because I have a dagger at the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a Roman dagger. That means when you stabbed and you got hurt, but you, through persuasion, you made it through because, you know, that's what that black heart means. That's, that's sick, bro. I did not know that. Because everybody, we all been through hard stuff in life, right? Definitely. That's a reminder. Like, you don't, don't forget where you come from. Because some people, when they get wealthy, they forget where they come from. Have you seen that fired? Because considering like, you know, you've, you've personal shop for musicians, you know, uh, big business people, uh, you know, celebrities even. Yeah. Uh, have, you, have you seen some of their come up? So maybe they've come to you when maybe they weren't that famous yet, they weren't that big yet. And then now, you know, they're, they're doing really, really well for themselves. Have you seen them kind of evolve as people, maybe for the good, maybe for not so good? Yeah, some of them I know is a close friend of mine. He's, he's the most amazing person. He's even from now not having much now, he's like, you know, doing really well. He's like the most nicest person in the world. But there's other people that I know that as soon as they got money, they changed. Their attitudes are different. They don't treat people differently cause, because they have money now. But money doesn't last forever, right? And money, it's true, they can't. Money can buy you happiness, but it makes you more comfortable in life. Which but, is you know, you yeah. That's what you want, you know what exactly. I mean? But you want to be humble. No matter where you come from, just be humble because life is always, life is way too short. Yeah. And people probably have that perception too, like, you know, your clients, the ones you work with, some like the ones that are like the high rollers are probably, you know, they, they might think that they're, they're rude. They're, you know, they're maybe not the nicest people snapping their fingers. Get me this, get me that. Uh, what, what, what's your take on that? You, are they usually, you know, pretty good people or? There, I mean, sometimes, I mean, look at somebody on TV, for example, you look, look at them a different way, but when you meet them in person, they're totally different people. Because I know, I know a client that people think he's, he's a bad guy, he's cheap, blah, blah, blah. In person, he's the nicest guy in the world. But it's just your persuasion, the way you see him and go, look at this guy. Plus, when you read about somebody, they go, okay, right away, as human nature, they go, this, this guy's a bad guy. Yeah. But when you meet somebody in real life, they're, they're totally different. I mean, every, even a celebrity, they want to be treated like a normal person. So when you see a celebrity, everybody runs to them, hey, picture, picture, picture. You, you get annoyed by that too, right? It's like, hey, man, I'm just here to shop. Just leave me alone. So but then you go, oh, this guy's an asshole, right? <laughs> Everybody's, I mean, they want to treat, everybody, even the, the most uh, uh, famous people, they want to be treated normal, like a normal person. Yeah, not like most of them. Yeah. Most, but there's all the ones that they think, hey, it's me, just get out of my way. Yeah. You, know, you know who the fuck I am? I was like, okay. Yeah. It's people Sorry. like that. Sorry. I, Sorry. Do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> no one, motherfucker. <laughs> Those people like that, we try not to, uh, I mean, personally, I try not to uh, help them. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is important, right? Of course. Especially if they're have an assistant, they're mean to my assistant, things like that. It's like, hey, that's not, that's, that's not okay. Yeah, you yeah. can't treat her differently the way you treat me. Like, he's part of me, so you can't. But I try to avoid, there's always a different way of doing it nice, the nice way instead of, hey, don't come, come shop here anymore because it's not my company. I work for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. When it, when it comes to the plan, even uh, for your, your, own, your own company, um, how long have you been running for? What are the plans with that? Are you looking to scale it? Like maybe? No, I mean, I, had, uh, I have a lot of people offering me different things. I mean, some have offered to buy it from me, but um, I'm just not ready yet. I want to see what I can do with it, you know? I got you. I have plans, so hopefully, I mean, hopefully they do. Uh, my dream is eventually to build a collection and have a fashion show and have all my friends over and just have a fashion show like we do in Italy and all that stuff, in that's Vancouver. Amazing. That's Hopefully it comes true, but that's what I exactly want to do. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure with your clientele, you could probably fill that room up pretty quickly. Oh, no problem. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait to be there. 100%. You all guys are going to be well, there. It'll awesome. be cool. I'll be there. Sit in front I, row. We need your help to dress me up, though. Oh, no. <laughs> I got you. You can wear no problem at all. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. One of the things I've noticed in um, fashion shows and on the walkway and stuff like that is sometimes, and this just might be my naiveness, but sometimes the pieces are a little bit more extreme or a little bit more out there 
do they use that as a tactic to kind of test the waters on some stuff? Is that essentially the purpose behind it? Or? Yeah. So, uh, so there is a couple. There's two different. When you go, uh, each brand has two different uh, um, releases. One is called main collection. Sorry, sorry, pre collection. Pre collection is all commercial stuff. So with t-shirt, hoodies, and sweaters, the key commercial that people can buy. And then there's a the main collection, which is the runway pieces. They do, um, like you said, literally cool little pieces. So the, the way it works is they're testing the water. So that piece is usually they're very expensive too. But if they don't get enough sales from that piece, they don't create it. So just one. So everything you see on the runway is only one piece. It's all sample sizes. So they don't get, uh, say, uh, 1,000 sales, and they don't want to produce it because it's very expensive to make. And chances of you people buying that is very difficult because it's expensive. Unless you're a celebrity, you wear it, and then you know you have the one piece. Usually, usually every brand has a celebrity that they're close to, yeah. and they get uh, to wear the stuff for free. So because if X Y wears it, everybody will see it, and then everyone won that piece. Gotcha. Is it tough to design and close for like the main or pre-catalog versus designing for the runway? Because are you designing the runways more for the look good on the models where the pre might be to look good in no, the, everybody the, or so they all basically are sample size they're all model sizes so like a model is a size 48 which is for a european as a 38 to be a small medium so they Shemium. make it a medium <laughs> yeah it's a medium they make that for uh, so when you go in a room like this we all samples and then there were those colors like this hoodie for example comes in eight colors you just choose the colors that will do well for your market so Vancouver is one of the markets that's different than any other part in Canada. So we buy in Vancouver differently than we buy in Toronto. Because what sells in Toronto, we're not going to sell in Vancouver. It's, it's kind of weird. Vancouver is a weird market. What's the differences there? The, so the fashion is different. Vancouver is more laid back. Yeah. As we, we like things like, we're like I'd, I'd like to think Toronto people might not like this, but we're a little more fashion forward in certain things. Yeah. Interesting. So you'd say, like, is Toronto maybe more like classic? More classic. They still have fashion there too, but you know. They're a little more classic. They don't buy some of the things that we do well in Vancouver. Yeah, it's, it's different. Vancouver is a different market. So far, I'm, I'm just curious because, like you said, you know, you get some pretty high clientele that come that come in, come see you. Uh, what's the highest? Like, what's the most someone's ever spent with you? Oh, with me? Uh, or even in the store? In the store, I mean, I I I, I heard that's what what, what 1.5 million. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, Like in one sitting? The same customer came twice, it was all together, it's today and tomorrow. For that today, so they came in two days and they spent $1.5 million on clothes. No, it was jewelry and clothes, yeah. Jewelry and clothes. Did you say it? It's funny, he came and bought a Lamborghini and then some and just walked on out of there. 100%. So, yeah, that's actually really cool. How about with you? Uh, probably, maybe 200k? I was actually just gonna get like my guess would have been like a hundred or something like that, but that's crazy. It doesn't happen a lot, but you know, it's, no, of it's, course, it is yeah. a blessing when that happens. You know, yeah. Yeah. it's a blessing, but you know, that means you're good at what you do. Well, oh, thank yeah. you, man. Of course, hundred percent. That and you know, good for them too, man. Like if if you have the means to do that, if you can. Like, I mean, good. For, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I'm sure they work hard for hundred percent, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's somebody coming in and buying a whole wardrobe, or is that a few? Yeah, basically, pieces, uh, like. We have appointments, like for example, Arvin calls, like, hey, uh, I want to change my whole closet. I'm throwing everything away. Mm -hmm. So I want, this is what I'm looking for, five business attires, six, you know, I want to add things to my closet. And then some, I have a summer house in Italy, I want to add clothes to that too. So the way it works is um, I know what size he is. So I, before he gets to the store, I put outfits together. So when he comes in, I go, I like this, I put it on, boom, it looks good, I'll take it, and then so forth. What's the, have you ever had like a very weird request or a very weird piece that somebody's wanted that's just been out of the ordinary? Yeah, because some of the celebrities do ask weird stuff, but I mean, if you can, I come with any nose, I, if I can, I would definitely, well, try my best to get that piece for that person. Absolutely. Have like, you ever said no, I'm not giving this to you, it's <laughs> ugly? I had people that buy some stuff, I said, no, I can't sell that to you. I said, if you want it, I asked him to sell it to you, but I know, because what happens if you wear it and you say, yes, Farha sold it to you, but I look bad. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For, Farhad styles me and Pramish. Yeah. And like he sees a polar opposite, so yeah. I'll see a shirt and, and 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 we look at each other in shop and I'm like, Pramish right there. Yeah. And he goes, Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Because plus you want to know your audience, right? So yeah. Pramish will put that on a shirt and wear it. Because I mean, in Asia and India, the fashion is different. Yeah. yeah. They like things to be all like new right. face. Yeah. If you go to India, like like. 
Every color is out there. Yeah. Every yeah. single color is out there. Even when I was there, I had like a green corta, like a very <laughs> green. And I never wore the thing, never wore the thing here. Wore there once. Does that mean they just have more coffins than us? No, no, the thing is the culture too. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. in uh, Italy too, they wear pink pants. I mean, if I lived in Italy, I wore some weirdest things, but because that's what the culture is okay there. Yeah. Yeah. Here is not okay, because you wear what you went in Rome, right? But do you guys ever have to, like, maybe um, if it's not in the store, like, I, I, like, you know, like, of course, I know, like, maybe the the one in this, the location in Toronto will have it, but what about, like, overseas? Like, you guys will. Yeah, but you can get stuff overseas, but we need time. It's not going to happen in, like, right. 24 hours, but we need uh, at least a couple months to get those. How close do the brands work with you? Like, let's just say if you have, like, someone that spends a lot of money with you guys, like, do you guys have rewards for them, like, such as, like, maybe send them on trips or send them. Like, you know, do things for them, like let them see the pieces first. Like, yeah, because uh, I have clients I'll, I'll take to uh, Milan with me sometimes. Like, it depends. I'm going to in May, I'm going to, uh, to Milan for, to, to Dubai. So, we um, sometimes will take a client with me. Oh, I'm going to take clients to Tom Ford. They see things six months ahead. So, the way it works, whatever you see in the fashion show, will not be usually get it in, in the market for six months later because they have to produce it and, you know. So we do take clients there, and then we take care of them, and they could see everything. And those are just like kind of some of the top spenders, like people who maybe spend the, the most with you. And pretty much, yeah. So we, have, we offer them the package, and they accept it, and we'll take them. I got you. What's an only ballpark for someone like that that normally spends on an annual basis with you? Uh, doesn't matter. Even if uh, let's say is a new client. Okay, got you. If you think like he's this, this client has potential, we will we, we, we will take them. Okay, does no matter. So the, you were saying you go to Milan to pick out what clothing you want to bring back here? Yes, we do that. Yeah. I have a team that comes with me too. The buyers are coming and just uh, advise them on the pieces that we're gonna get. Yeah. Okay. So you go there every six months, and then you come back. Yes. Uh, last year I went to Italy like five times. So it was good. That's a cool yeah. role. Yeah. Really you cool. went in September as well. Yeah. yeah. I've been quite quite a, quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I was like every time clients like, "Oh, you're always away. Good life." I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> blessed." <laughs> I met him when he first started the company. He's a great guy, and then that's how we, now look at him now. He's like, his company worked. Almost 400 million. This is sorry, I'm, I'm Mike, Mike, Mike Amiri. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so you know. Okay, that's. Yeah, yeah. That's I, I met him when he first started. Mike Amiri. Yeah. Oh, okay, in so Paris, you know, like what, okay, 10, 15 that's years 10, ago. 15 years ago, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, why, why not you? You know what I mean? It's why great. not you? Know, he, I mean, he, he was running his business for 10 years before he started uh, being successful. Yeah. I think, I uh, if I'm not wrong, I think what happened, Justin Bieber needed a pair of jeans, so he went to the store in LA, uh, and then bought a pair of jeans like that, and that's how he. Popular, got big. I believe oh, that's how it happened, but yeah. Yeah. they shoot like 10 t-shirts, probably one of them gonna work. Oh, yeah. okay. That's how it works. Yeah. Jazz would be perfect for that job. Yeah, man. Yeah. Just standing there with their ADHD shooting t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, like next one. <laughs> yeah. And the beautiful cashmere too, a good quality cashmere. I got you. Like, so, yeah, that's crazy. They're probably going through so much fabric just to get one piece, right? To get it. I mean, plus the, every piece is different. It's not going to look the same. Yeah. Which is nice to go with that. I had no idea. Is there other companies out there that, like other uh, fashion companies, that uh, clothing companies that, that have maybe like not the, like, you know, because that's pretty unorthodox, no? Like when it comes to creating clothing. But do, any other companies that do things I like that? I don't think so, no. Not really. As far right? as I know, I don't think so. You see like people like Kanye West, like, you know, he has like, you know, Rips in his clothes and wearing like that baggy fit and things like that too. Okay, I didn't know. This dude, like, I mean, we think when Connie, anything he wears overnight, a hit. Yeah. Because yeah. that that guy's a genius. The way he, he mind yeah, thinks, people don't get him, but he's his mind thinks he differently. He sees things that people we don't see a normal yeah. person. So that's what funny. do you think about his brand overall? I mean, some of, some of the pieces are great, but most of it is not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but the shoes and some of the ideas he come with is very good, but. Most of it is, it is not very nice. But so, do you would you say like uh, going back to the piece of when you said you know do one thing really really well? So would you say that the most of these companies, except uh, just because they have good T-shirts or good you know they make really good jeans or good shoes, like is is it hard for them to stay consistent throughout? Like just like maybe like they're good at their 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 tops and their bottoms, but they're not good with their their the shoes. Or they're not good with. So what happens with the brands when when they make it? They get popular. In the beginning, they do really good quality stuff, like the best of the best. And then once they become popular, they mass produce it, and the quality is never the same. Like kind of goes and Macaj made in Canada before Macaj was, and then when, now now they become so popular, the quality is not there because yeah. all made in China now or other places because they're making instead of producing hundred pieces, they do a thousand pieces. Obviously, the quality is not going to be there. They're trying to save on that too, right? Because they're, they're markups. But the prices will yeah, stay the same. The margins, and yeah. things like that. I got you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, maybe there's, there's someone listening out here that has a, a clothing brand or things like that. What would, uh, 
aside from them picking one thing and doing it really, really well, I guess what happens is like when you first start a business, sometimes when you get discouraged uh, and you're not getting the reception, like I'm sure the gentleman who started Amiri, uh, he had that same thing for the first 10 years until Justin Bieber wore his jeans. Um, instead of maybe going back and figuring out why that t-shirt isn't selling uh, and you know maybe jumping to it now trying to sell jeans now trying to sell suits and things like that what would you what would you what would you what would you say to them just kind of stick with the, the thing if you, if you believe in your brand believe in yourself don't give up like a lot of us what we do is we start something and then go fuck this i can't do this anymore. you give up just believe I mean, when you believe in yourself believe in what you're creating is gonna do well but the same time is like you don't want to mortgage your house you mortgage your house for it but i mean if you can't you can't but stick don't spend too much money, start slowly, don't go big. Try to make it in your means, but do not dis get discouraged, stay positive if you can, you know. Have people around you that have the same mindset as you, that's very important. Like, and honesty. Yeah, honesty, yeah, honesty is the key. If, you, if you're the PC making is trash, uh, one of your friends be honest with you, trash. Yeah. And keep trying, you know, Instagram and TikTok is all, I mean, they're very, very popular right now, they will help you get into your piece. Do you feel like that, that that dictates a lot of sales when it comes to certain companies, certain fashion? Uh, a lot of clothing? yeah, especially in TikTok, for right now is big. It's very big. Yeah. Like okay. a celebrity has some piece, we post it, it sells usually it sells right away. I got you. What I see a lot too, like online, is uh, sometimes when people are putting their fashion pieces, they'll just put like the clothes on them. You know what I mean? Just sorry, just just post the clothing, just like you know, on a hanger or whatever it is. Do you feel like it's more important for, important for them to show who's wearing it? Instead of just what it is. Yeah, if it's an, if you see who if it's a big brand like Gucci, for example, that I mean they've made it so well, they don't have to do that. But it's, but, they, but they have models, but not celebrities. But if it's a new brand, on the celebrity, usually people like it better. Yeah. Like for example, anything Kanye wears, no matter what it is, it's a garbage bag. People will go. Oh, yeah. Oh. Gives it credibility. Yeah. 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 It's important. I, I guess it goes back to the it goes back to the thing you were saying about the confidence, right? It's not about what you're wearing, it's about how you wear it. So yeah. Even if you have, you know, you're making T-shirts or suits or whatever, and the person wearing it is very confident in that photo shoot or that video shoot, someone might just see it and be like, "Oh, I want to be like that guy." Right? Yeah. Well, that like, exact same thing. Well, it's like, what the, what glasses are you wearing? What hat is that? I want to yeah. see. Yeah. I'm trying to get it. That's yeah. that's how it works. Keep keep trying. You know. Yeah. Like uh, I mean, like I said, every brand has started differently, and they all went through a hard time, yeah. and then now they made it. How hard is it? How hard do you think it is to scale clothing? I would, I would say it's a probably a hard business to kind of get into. Clothing business. Let's say if you want to start a clothing business and you're like a fly in a world of giants. Wow. You you want to do be like a niche something niche enough that people want want to see you wear. Yeah. If you do a t-shirt, how many people in the world have t-shirts, right? What makes your t-shirt more special than the uh, the Gucci or whatever or yeah. even a little lemon t-shirt? What's so special about it, right? And even the lower cost t-shirts the you got the what's that newest one it's always on social media true oh true classics yeah, yeah. true classics yeah. you got your uniqlo's your yeah. h&m's like even basic clothing it's the market's so saturated so you yeah, have to yeah. be doing something different right yeah because when they make actually uh, uniqlo when it makes it they make a billion pieces so i mean they sell like zara has the best you know because they see a fashion show by the time the fashion show is uh, finished, already producing, it's on the shelf, they're yeah. selling it. Oh, yeah, it's called fast fashion. Fast fashion is like you create, what Zora does, so successful at it. By the time the fashion show is over, they already they have ships that make it and they sell it, and then by the time the actual piece comes out, they already sold X amount, X, Y, Z. Yeah. Zara is very successful. Would you rather somebody get a piece that they could just hold on for five years for and wear frequently, or more of the fast fashion? I mean, most no, if people get what happens. You get bored of your piece. So what happens if you buy a jacket for four grand, for example? You wear it like four or five times. It feels good about it, but eventually you get tired of the color. It's like almost something new. People wear fast fashion because it's, I mean the quality is not the same. But that's why you spend so much money. They buy like ten T-shirts, uh, and they they all damage. You can buy one T-shirt that lasts ten times more than that ten pieces you bought. But you know, human nature to keep on buying more garbage. Because you know, it toss them out. Because I spent 20 bucks on this T-shirt. It's only 20 dollars. So I'm spending like what? You buy 10 of those, it adds up so much, right? Yeah. Instead of buying one that it really feels good. I mean, right now, especially you guys know, it's called quiet fashion. Yeah. I call it quiet gangster, you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> what it is is like uh, less logo-y. Yeah. So like for example, like brands like Loro Piana and things like that. Brunello, uh, Brunello Loro Piana, Tom Ford. 
Zen, yeah. Yeah, Zen, they're very, very quiet. So they see the quality, because those things you wear for a very long time, but it doesn't go out of fashion. If you wear like a Dior piece, a t-shirt Dior, you, wear to, you go to a party, the four guys are in the same shirt. And then what, right? Who's gonna you go, you all look at your plate? playing the same team or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that one Dior shirt was like that big time. We had Dior all over it? Yeah, yeah but it was like that Terry cloth oh, yeah, style. Yeah, the, yeah. I remember Terry, yeah. you go out to any lounge club, wherever you go, you have four guys wearing the same one in different colors. Yeah, the Vancouver five, five boy look, right? Yeah. You have a Dior <laughs> t-shirt, Amiri jeans, and the Dior uh, sneakers. Yeah. yeah. You still see that if you go out, there's a couple guys you run into the same thing. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, people, some people, uh, they want, like, if I was spend a thousand bucks, I wanted to say the logo all over it, right? Yeah. That's what they believe in that. Because I want people to see me, oh, look at me, what I'm wearing, oh, it's Dior, or it's Alvi, or it's, you know. And the other people's, like, really subtle, right? I was seeing it. Yeah, because you can spend like, good money in a nice piece you can wear for, let's say, five, six years. Yeah. Instead of just, like, keep buying $800, $800. It just adds up, right? At that time, you think about it. It's like, oh, I'm just spending like X amount of dollars. It's not a big deal. But you think about how many pieces you bought at that price. It's like, you know, it's already over five, six K. It's like, hey, come on. It's nice for a company to have. You want a company. It's nice for you to have buy that stuff. But in reality, it's like, as a consumer, it's like, hey, man. That's what I like to tell my clients that let's not buy so many of the same things. Try to change up, buy different things that you last you longer. People say Tom Ford is so expensive, but if you have one Tom Ford piece, it lasts you for 10 years. And always look classic. I got a Tom Ford suit from 2013. Yeah. Still looks fresh. Unless you stay the same size, it's going to look good on you every time you wear it. But you wear like what? You buy like 50 Zara suits for like $200 each. Sit in your closet, you're never going to wear it because the, the material feels like sandpaper when you wear it, you know? But if you don't care, that, that's, that's your thing. That's your thing, right? What are your like top three brands of choice? For me, I mean, obviously, uh, I love Tom Ford. Not because I work for the brand, it's just because of the quality and the way the brand sees it is, I mean, the, in the future, the way we look in the future too is always gonna, one piece that always lasts you longer too, and it looks great. And then second one would be, um, I love uh, Loro Piana. And then Amiri. My casual look is, I love that distress look. Yeah. Once I was wearing uh, all my distress stuff, the client walked by me and thought I was a homeless guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the jeans are red, the t-shirt was red, I had the hat on. Uh, I was like, look, I look great. Yeah. <laughs> I had easy shoes on. I'm like, hey, he goes, what? Is you? I didn't recognize it. I thought you were going to rob me. I was like, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, people's perception is different, right? Yeah. These are older guys, so that's why I didn't. And, yeah. But, I mean, those are three brands that I, uh, I really actually like. Whenever I wear my Amiri, this guy says the same thing. He said, you look like a gangster. I was like, I'm not trying, man. It just, I like <laughs> you just how it looks. looks. It looks great. Like, you don't, no wonder you, know. you get pulled over. It's kind of <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks dope, though. Not like, yeah, I mean, quite gangster look is very important. You look like, you know, no logo, but Simple, pe right? pe yeah. people know this guy is somebody because the way you bring yourself up, you know? Yeah, and you, you can even see it in, like, your, the, the piece that you're wearing yourself. It's just like, it could be any brand, but it looks really, really good. And it's solid, and it's similar to Laurel Piana. Like. It's a Laurel Piana, not the same quality as Laurel Piana, but yeah, obviously. But uh, Laurel Piana is like um, one of the oldest companies. They used to produce their own fabrics. Yeah. But now they, um, they're, they've they been bought by LVMH, which is uh, the other brand. They, they own uh, Dom Champagne, they own uh, LV, Dior, Fendi, Celine. They own all the brands owned by. Oh, there's like three big brands that yeah. own pretty much every exactly. brand. There's Kering, there's Richmond, and then there is uh, LVMH. LVMH is the biggest. Yeah, they're like one of the biggest companies in the world. Yeah, they own Sephora, they own, yeah. Yeah, they they own like everything. Trillions and like uh, ass amount. I believe uh, the owner is the richest guy in the world. Yeah. I mean, good for him. Like, yeah. They do. He saw, I mean, he, he, they had an idea back in the day, not him, but the guy that started the brand, but, and stick to it, right? He believed that, you know, this is, this is what I'm going to do. Like even Elon Musk, when he first started, he had an idea, and nobody believes it, and look at him now, right? Yeah. Only it takes one person to believe in you, and that's all it takes, sometimes. And just persistence. Yeah, persistence, don't doing, give up. Doing it every day. Keep trying, and you know, if it doesn't work, try it again. Yeah. If he gets frustrated, put it on the side, go for a walk. Yeah. Come back to it or start tomorrow again. Try a different approach. Talk to someone about it. Even in the gym, you're working out, you go, Fuck, I'm not feeling it today. You get angry. He's like, oh, we'll just 
Go for a walk, come back. Yeah. You feel good about yourself, right? So if success was just a straight line, it'd be pretty boring, right? Yeah, very true. It's never, it's never easy. Not, nothing, life is not easy. But life is short, though, you know? Keep taking your supplements, Connor. From the, supplement, the supplement house. house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true. Yeah, far ahead. Just keep taking your supplements from the supplement, supplement house. house. I yeah. mean, they have some great stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice stuff. I love we'll you guys' stuff. You. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Instead of making it to 75, we'll get you to 100. 100. Guaranteed, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those who are wondering who Farhad's worked with or the, the clientele list or what he does exactly. I mean, you can check out his Instagram, Farhad. What is it? Farhad Fashion Whisperer. Farhad Fashion which we'll put it in the we'll put it in the description. I'll put yeah. it at the start of the video as yeah. well. As well as the Blackheart. Blackheart.ca, yeah. Blackheart. The, the Blackheart.ca. The Blackheart. The Blackheart. The Blackheart. Hey, we're, we're going to be using Farhad to, con to consult our uh, supplement house uh, and uh, House Talks podcast apparel that we'll have coming out. And, and the way you three dress. <laughs> uh, one thing we like to do at the end, Farhad, uh, is just a message. I don't know, message to anyone out there listening that, you know, like I said, that's into fashion, that wants to do the same thing that you do, wants to start their own line, or honestly, just as a business owner or just someone trying to figure it out in life. What, what would be your message to them? Like what I tell when I first hired new associates, uh, my, our company is like, is there's a hard times and there's easy times. The hard times, remember, do not give up. Because what happens, a lot of guys come in, they start to have a couple of bad sales and then they give up and they, and they leave. Stick to it. Like, I mean, in sales, you're always as good as, you're as good as your last sale, you know? So just remember, just stick to it. Even if it's a frustrated day, just, it's hard to say for me, do not give up. Sometimes I'm, at work, I'm so frustrated. It's like, you know, I called eight people, nobody showed up, but I stick to it, you know? just. Don't, don't, don't try not to give up. That's the most important thing. Do not give up. Awesome, Farhad. Thank you very much, brother. Thank, thank you very much for coming on. This was a good time. I learned a lot. Yeah, I'm sure so a lot of our viewers have as well. Uh, so like we said, guys, check Farhad out. Check out his pages. Check out his business. You will definitely be impressed. And if you need clothes from Holt. Yeah, if, and if you need clothes from Holt Rent Proof, this is the guy. Um, I'm sure his phone is filled with clients, but I need, sensing the type of guy he is, man, he's a good dude, so yeah he'll always make time for you yeah exactly so until next time guys be good